So I am fascinated by the fact that you are the fifth generation of jewellers. Yes, I, yes I am. I, um, my father, my great-grandfather, they, they all um, um, sold antique jewellery. Uh -huh. So it was not something that I was particularly interested in when my father retired. Uh, so, and he, but he was the world expert in English silver and Georgian jewellery and often used to um, get asked about the provenance and pieces, but I wasn't really like that, I was dressed in beaver. <laughs> uh, and so, um, you know, with my boots and my floppy hat and everything, so, and bell-bottom trousers and it really wasn't my thing. Oh, it would be my heaven. And although you're fifth generation of oh. jewellers, you're the first female, you're the first woman. Yes. Well, I started in 1985 and I don't think there were any women jewellers then. I think there might have been one, maybe, or, or two. But, um, that, no, that's, that's always, it was rather a surprise that I was asked to do it by a friend who had an antique jewellery shop off Bond Street and he asked me to do it. And at that point I said, no, thank you. <laughs> I said, no, no, wh why, would I, why would I do that? Why would you think I could do that? Um, and he said, no, no, I think it's a really good idea. So I thought, oh, well, we'll give it a try. It'll probably last a couple of years and then I'll be and gone. here we are. And here we are, really. 35 years later, I appear still to be here. And no one's more surprised or thrilled than me. Yeah, and us. <laughs> and you're also famous for your love of ballet. Yeah. Um, and your end, how it inspires you. And could you tell me a little bit about your involvement in, in, um, in the ballet? Yes, world? well, I, I was taken to Covent Garden when I was four years old to the Sleeping Beauty. I'll never forget it. And um, just fell in love. Four? Uh, just, I was four years old. Wow. My mother was very, it was very risky taking me. Yes, it's a four I'm just year thinking, old. I did you know. not take my I know. <laughs> um, but I was absolutely entranced. And I've loved it ever since, actually. As the colours of the costumes have hugely influenced my uh, take on the gemstones and all the coloured gemstones and I was the first person right back in 1990 to uh, mix all the coloured stones and they came from the costumes of the Sleeping wow. Beauty and, yeah. and so yes yeah, so I do have a big ballet collection I'm also a trustee of the New English Ballet Theatre and yeah involved in all sorts of projects that have to do with the ballet I love it if you I think I go to the ballet in the evenings and you just you're taken to another world and you don't think about emails, you don't think mm. about somebody might be trying to call you or anything. I get completely lost and I come out refreshed, which yes. is rather odd yes. way of no, describing no, no, it. But I, yeah, it's, it's like, it is like, like, skiing, like a, really. I suppose, yeah. except I'm a useless skier. Oh my goodness, I can't I'm ski for love nor money. Okay, so um, I know Chelsea and Bloom is coming yes, very soon. soon. And, um, I know you get very involved in it. Yes, it's and my favourite time of year. Um, oh. In May, we have um, we always do a massive window in Chelsea, fresh flowers. We've done an octopus and a giraffe, and goodness knows a car and all sorts of things. <laughs> it's all a bit mad, really. Um, and um, uh, we absolutely love it. Everyone in the in the store and the office, our office, come over, and we just have the best week. Uh, and um, Chelsea and London is full of people coming up the flower show and there's such a buzz around uh -huh. there. Um, so yeah, anyone who is around should come uh, that week and look at everybody's windows because they really pull the stops out. But this year I'm specifically really fascinated with what you're doing because you are making a teapot. Yes, well the, um, so the um, uh, theme is British icons. Ah. And I'm sure, you know, there are lots of Winston Churchills and all sorts of other things. But I mean, to me, the most iconic thing about is Britain is tea. So we're doing a big teapot um, with um, a cup and saucer and sugar in the milk, all in flowers. And the tea that comes out of the spout of the teapot is going to be um, um, little brown flowers, which are so pretty to look like tea. I know, I'm really looking forward to it, actually. It's going to be a bit mad, but every window I've ever done is a little bit mad. But I think it's quite fun. Yeah. The madness is very Definitely ridiculous. worth coming to look at. So, um, I'm very excited, and I'm sure you are, that the, our, our queen is yeah. having her 70. 70. I know, it's extraordinary. I mean, how lucky are we 
to have her, have had her on the throne for 70, 70 years. years. I mean, I just hope the people in this country understand how lucky they are. To have a strong woman in power yes. for 70 years, the first time yes. ever, ever a monarch. Ever. Has, has and she's, you know, um, we've had stability. We've had, I think she's an extraordinary woman. Yeah. I really do. And I hope everybody celebrates her I think 70 they do. Years. I think it, her, her, the love of her goes beyond any kind of politics or, or I nations. Agree. Or I it's agree. actually, you know, with her, her how do you say that? Stead, pa steadfastness, steadfastness, yes. Steadfastness and just, yes. just being there and, and mm. humanitarian. And, and when you think how many crises there have been during her reign, it is absolutely extraordinary that she's been so stable and, I mean, in a way, led the country through it. And anybody who thinks otherwise doesn't really deserve to have her. Mm. Cheers. Cheers to the Queen. So what, you, you were a Liverpool fan? Like I'm a Liverpool yeah. fan, yes. I know, it doesn't seem exactly obvious from talk, talking to me probably that I'm a Liverpool fan. I don't know what you're talking fan. about. I don't know what you think Liverpool but, should, um, should look like. I know, exactly. <laughs> so I, I know, I love it. I went to Wembley the other day for the um, uh, FA semi-final against Man City. And I promise you, that I was in a row with a whole lot of guys wearing baseball caps and every time they, every time they scored a goal, we were high-fiving each other. <laughs> and the roar of the crowd oh, at Wembley yeah. was something, I was 75,000 people there. That it was absolutely like spectacular. Man City, Man City. Yeah. Um, so we, we have to beat them to get to the top of the Premier League. So how do you, when, you, when you're coming up with a new collection, mm. a new, uh, what's your, how do you get your inspiration? So the inspiration really has always been in a way about my own lifestyle, which is, you know, I had two small children. Um, I did go to parties like everybody else, mm -hmm. but I also worked all day, um, mm -hmm. went to ballet, went to football mm -hmm. matches, you know. And so my life was quite varied. So I've always thought that when you design a piece of jewellery for a woman, you, she needs to know that it has some relevance to her life. Yes. Um, and so that, you know, she can wear it during the day and then if she hasn't got time to change, wears, it, wears the same thing Football in Football match, stick another tomorrow. one on. I was wearing the these to Wembley actually. Great. Yeah, no, they were absolutely Lovely. fine. And I, I always like a lot of layering and the fact that you, you know, you don't mm. have, you can mix them all up. And, yes. I mean, I love this. Yes, it and is I, such a pretty I bracelet. Love, and that. I love it like over a shirt or, or and, or, you know, you can the thing about gold bracelets is that they're, they're quite sporty. So you yeah. can wear them with a jumper in the winter, you can wear them with a linen dress in the summer, um, which is what I mean about wear, trying to wear the jewellery as much as possible so that you get a lot of wear out of it. So the tiara. Mm. Is yeah, I know, this is tiara. my exciting moment. <laughs> I've always wanted to design a tiara, and finally since, I've done since it. Since you were three, you were yeah, sort probably. of. When we were all playing with, you know, fairy tiaras and things. Um, so I've always wanted to design the tiara, and finally I've done it. And I'm so pleased it's going to be in the Sotheby's uh, tiara exhibition, and it looks gorgeous. And I'm dying to wear it. So I don't Me quite too. know where. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so yes, I've just waiting to see if someone asks me to somewhere where I can wear the tiara. But I I think a tiara should be worn everywhere. Well, that's I, I just don't think where? it should be. I mean, the big, heavy diamond and pearl ones, you, you are obviously not going to do that. But mine is lighter and it's a little bit smaller and it's just, you know... I'm just picturing you here be. today in a suit a tiara. A tiara. I, mean, I should have worn it, shouldn't yeah, I? You should have. <laughs> Jewelry you can wear anywhere. You know, the Duchess of Cambridge really uh, made me aware of your jewellery. Yes. On her a lot. Yes, um, she does look lovely, I must say. She's, she really does. And I'm hoping she has inspired other women to wear fine jewellery. Um, my jewellery is perfect for a working mother, which is what she is. She could wear a piece during the day and then if it's still on her ears in the evening. And I love that about nice. her. She does, I love the fact that she, she wears a lot of high street stuff as mm. well and she she reuses mm. things mm. and I think that's so important. Yeah, it mixes and it all mixes up. Mixes matches, keeps no. things, re yeah. wears them. She's a lovely woman. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, Rosie, how hard is it to produce a film in America? Ooh, 
it's a massive question. It's a, such a big question, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's, it's really, really a ridiculous thing to do is produce film anywhere. Yeah, because I it, can understand that. It's so hard, it's like trying to put value on butter that's melting. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, and everybody tries by going, oh, let's get this known person and that mm. known person, and then and you're, it's like wrangling ants. Mm. So it's absolutely crazy. Mm. But at the same time, if you can kind of just get it all the little links going at, at, at the right time, it's, it's fantastic. It's so fabulous. And Such a sense of achievement oh, to, yes. Yes, to do that. I yes. mean, really, I admire you enormously. I think I would never be able to do something like that. Thank you. I think, you know what, I think, Producing for women is a very natural instinct because we're used to producing lives, producing mm. household, mm. work, children, mm. school. Do, 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 yeah, do, producing basically. Producing. So yeah. your brain is always having to, to, mm. to be on, on, on so many different levels. Mm. And that's what producing a film is like mm. because you're having to literally make sure people are fed and make sure mm. the money's coming in. Yeah. Here and, and the creative. Mm. So, so it's all a bit big multitask, really. Multi, massive, massive multitask. Oh. I know that you go between acting and producing. Uh, which do you prefer? It's so funny. Um, acting is almost like a holiday, really. <laughs> if you just yes. do an acting role, it's like, oh, I just turn up, yeah. up her character, mm. you know, you do your work. Mm. But, um, mm. it's, but um, honestly, I sometimes forget whether I am in front of the camera or behind the camera because mm. you're kind of just creating a piece of work. You're, mm. create, you're, you're creating. So I'm used to having the scripts written on my kitchen table mm. and then casting them. And then like I'm, I'm in a movie at the moment that I'm mm. also producing. And mm. I didn't plan to be, but it's, it's almost easier. And you, oh, you yes, because you're, you're more in control you're of what's going on. Yes. And my partner's an actor and he, mm. he directed a movie. You know, strangely. The whole crew stayed in this hotel when he was doing it. Really? In the Kensington? In the, in the Kensington. No. Yeah. Um, well, God, that's a small world. I know. How extraordinary. He, it's a lovely um, hotel. It's a gorgeous yeah, hotel. Yeah, it's a lovely hotel. But he always says, um, when he's interviewed, and they say, oh, and, and you were in front of the camera and behind the camera, and he said, yes, well, I knew I'd be available. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew I'd turn up on time. Yes, <laughs> quite. <laughs> Good. You know what's funny is I was here on the way over here in the in the taxi mm. and um, my assistant Eva, mm. Mm. Um, she's having a look around. Yes. Um, she she said, "Oh, I'm just taking a photo because I have to tell my my parents that this is actually my job." Mm. And I said, "Yes, but isn't it amazing that? And why can't um, what we love doing be our mm. job?" Well, I think it's um, I think you're incredibly lucky if you love what you do because you do it for a long time you start in yeah. your 20s and you end in your 70s yeah. you know whatever yeah. and i think it's really fantastic for people to find something they love doing and i feel just so lucky that i've had 35 years of doing what i love doing mm.